can be made clean. It's only by your word. It's only by your word. So fill my heart with grace and joy that I can sing. The wonder of your love. The wonder of your love. Lord, make me pure in heart. Make my heart faithful and true. So when you look at me, it's your righteousness you see. Lord, make me pure in The only way that I can be made free is only by your blood. It's only by your word So fill my heart with grace And joy that I can see The wonder of your love The wonder of your love Lord, make me pure in heart Make my heart faithful and true So when you look at me it's your righteousness you see. Lord, make me pure in Make me pure in Lord, make me pure in Make my heart faithful and true. So when you look at me, it's your righteousness you see. Lord, make me pure in Praise God. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're watching from. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. I was just um, listening to Lord make me pure in art. So that when you look at me, it is your righteousness that you see. Lord, make me pure in art. So that when you look at me, it is your righteousness that you see. Okay, so by the grace of God, we here today. We here today. We thank God for making it possible for us to to come in thank you viewers i really appreciate god bless you you welcome joseph you welcome gospel you welcome etim you welcome harmony you welcome one kite you welcome i see so many people i'm not gonna sleep calling name but i just want to tell you god bless you god bless you god bless you for tuning in so today we're gonna be speaking about miracle we're going to be talking about miracle and I'm going to be picking my text real quick. Like I said, I know how it is for you guys to burn, to buy data and just come on and view. So without taking much of your time, like I would just appreciate we go, we go on straight to point. So people can watch from the beginning and they can key into the prayer and meditate and pray. And that's just it. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I hope you guys are having a good time. Hope you guys are having a nice day. It's summer year, it's pretty hot. Today went as far as 3 to 5. Like it's so hot here. Okay, that's by the way. So we're going to be talking about miracle today. And I'll be picking my text from Ephesians 3.20. And I'm not going to read everything. You can read it at your spare time. Just take it down because I'm going to summarize everything for you guys. So my text will be going from Ephesians 3, chapter 3, verses 20. And then another one is going to be from Luke, 
chapter 5 from verses 1 and I read down to 11. So when we talk about miracle, what do you, what, what do you believe? What do you understand by the word miracle? The word miracle simply means, you know, there's something different about people say, and um, there's something about, there's something different about miracle from luck. There's a word called luck. There's a word called miracle. So today we're going to be talking about miracle. I'm going to take you into the scripture and we'll be speaking about miracle. So when it comes to miracle, I'm going to cite an instance for you what a miracle is. A miracle is me not having a womb to conceive as a woman. But miraculously, God did it for me. Irrespective of the doctor's report, irrespective of my numerous tests, irrespective of my numerous scans, irrespective of my numerous x-ray, miracle came when they said, I do not have a womb to conceive a child. A miracle happened and I was able to get pregnant and I was able to give birth. I should give birth. I was able to give birth to a child irrespective of what was said. Irrespective of what was said. That is a miracle. A miracle is you. Not having fuel in your vehicle. You don't have gas in your car. And you know pretty well that there is no gas in this vehicle. And you pick that vehicle and you drove to a distance. And the fuel was able, like you don't even know where you got out the fuel came. And you drove successfully to that place. That is a miracle. A miracle is people seeking for a job and they do not have a degree to meet up for that job. But miraculously, they find themselves working in that sector. They find themselves doing that job. That is a miracle. A miracle is you not having money in your pocket. You know very well you do not have a dime in your pocket. But you went in the mall, you went in the shop. And then you bought something and you open your wallet up and then you see money in your wallet. You see money in your purse. You don't know where this money came from. That is what is called miracle. And when it comes to trusting God, when it comes to believing God, when it comes to working on the ways of God, when it comes to being a Christian, when it comes to being a believer, when it comes to being a born again Christian, that is how you expect your miracle. Miracle simply means impossibility turning into possibilities. A miracle is you not ever being able to go to a, you've never been to a missionary school. You've never been to anywhere, but you're able to preach the word of God. That's a miracle. A miracle is something you do not believe that you have the capability. You have the power on your own to do it. You have the knowledge and then you find yourself doing those things. Those are the things we call miracle. And such miracle truly comes when you know God. Such miracles truly comes when you have called upon God. Such miracles only comes to the believers, children of God. Those that put their trust in God, those miracles really come to them. A miracle was what happened in the Bible at the age of 100, you were still able to bear a child. That's a miracle. A miracle was Jesus raising Lazarus from death after four days. People thought Lazarus was fermenting. People thought Lazarus was smelling. People thought maggots had entered into Lazarus body but miraculously God did a miracle and they saw it by raising Lazarus from death that was a miracle so Jesus had a bigger plan for Peter Jesus had a very big plan 
for Peter. God had a miraculous plan for Peter and his calling. You know something? Like, you don't really get it. A miracle comes to you. Like, a miracle comes to you. Not studying for a paper. Like, you've been so afraid. You know, I was so crazy back in the university. We had to take an optional course. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I do not even know simple mathematics. And here I am going to do further mathematics. And I said to myself, you know what? I do not care. I would rather do accounting than for me to put up with some of the lecturers whom I could not contend with. I went in for an accounting course. The miracle came that I don't know how I did it, but I miraculously passed my accounting course so very well as a medical student. I so passed the accounting course compared to the business students. Like people were coming and telling me, can you teach me this? Can you teach me that? I got no idea. But I just know how to read and go sit down and pour it. That is a miracle. A miracle is people believing that you are dumb. They can see nothing good in you. But you just come on miraculously. God uses you and does something really strange. And people are like, wow, what's a miracle? I'm trying to tell you what a miracle is. So it does not matter where you have gone. It does not matter how bad it is. It does not matter what the report says. It does not matter what people feel. I want you to believe that God still does miracle. And he can still do a miracle for you. Irrespective of your age. Irrespective of your race. Irrespective of your location. Irrespective of your capabilities. God can still do a miracle for you. A miracle is something that you have no hope. Like, you have no hope. The woman said she has just very little to eat with her son tonight. And when they are done eating, they would die tomorrow. And then the prophet said to her, do you have oil in the house? And she believed. And she went and did like the prophet instructed. And she had so much oil to sell. That was a miracle. I don't know if you can actually re relate what a miracle is right now. So it does not really matter where you have gone astray in your life. It does not really matter how sick you are in your body. It does not really matter how hopeless and how jobless you are right now. Miracles still happens. So long as you believe. So long as you trust, so long as you hope in God, miracle still happens. You know, yesterday I was just sitting down. I was just sitting down yesterday when I, I, I was just sitting down yesterday and I was praying. I was praying. I said, God, God, I need a word to go and speak. I need a word. I was praying. I was praying. After my fasting, I was praying. And then somebody just came up to me and he said, Kate, why are you worried? I said, oh my goodness, I have so many schoolwork to do. And he said, well, okay, let me see. And I just showed him. He just went and did them and brought them to me. Miracles still happens. When you are hopeless, when, when you have been rejected, when you have been ignored, when you have been taken for granted, when you have been jubilized by people, God sends an angel and miracle happens. I don't care what the doctor's report has said. I don't care what the diagnosis has said. I don't care what your situation has said. I don't care what your age status is. I don't care what your marital status is. I don't care what your relationship status is. I just want you to know that miracle still happens. God of the last hours. 
God of miracle. All you need to do is just call on him. All you need to do is just be willing. All you need to do is just be focused. All you need to do is just put your faith. You begin to open people. When you so need them the most, they will fail you. You begin to open people. All they will do in your life is make excuses. You begin to open people. They will never be there for you. So why not put your hope and your trust on the miraculous God that can cause things to happen? Why not begin to rely on the one that can make things to happen? Peter toyed all night. Peter toyed all night. But God had a purpose for Peter and the calling of him in his life. And you know what he did? When Peter toiled all night, he could not. One single, one single. And then the miracle happened. Peter, throw your net. If I were the one, I would have said, ah, this man. You don't even know what you're saying. I've been throwing my net towards that direction all through the night. I couldn't get anything. And you're still telling me to throw my net. Probably I would have been paranoid. Probably I would have been pissed off if I were to be in Peter's shoe. But he obeyed. And he cast his net. Peter could not pull out the fish. It was too heavy. I'm sure it was the best out of all that Peter has ever fished in his life. So come on, people of God. Sorry about that. I had an incoming call. So you got to trust God. You got to put your hope. You got to put your everything in God. Because if you hope on human being, hmm, you have not seen anything. By the time you will need them the very most, that is when they will put you down. You know, the devil uses people to get to people. The devil can use your friend. The devil can use your neighbor. The devil can use your parents. The devil can use your sibling. The Bible speaking says, be not, be unaware of what the devil can do. Because the devil can come in different form. It was Peter's decision. You know, it was Peter's decision to trust God. It was Peter's decision to trust God solely. It was his decision for him to wait on God. It was Peter's decision to trust God and trust in his words. You know that some of us, we do not even trust God. We can't even wait on God. We can't even wait on God. The moment we have a problem and we take it to God in prayer, and that thing, we take it to God in prayer, and that thing does not happen like right now, like immediately, we give up hope. Meanwhile, the Bible speaking says that the trying of our faith worketh patience. You know something? Sometimes God just want to see. Sometimes God really want to see. Is this person actually for me? Can this person actually stand the test of time? Can this person really wait on me? He tried Job. He tried Job. The devil went to God and he said, You know what? The reason Job is following you and saving you is because you have made everything sufficient for Job. But I want to dare you that if you take everything from Job, that Job will not save you. <laughs> Come on, people of God, you did not hear me. The devil says to God, if you take everything from Job, I am sure that Job will not save you. And God was like, maybe, probably. And then he said, you know something? Put Job to a test. And let's see how much Job loves you. Let's see how much Job can stand by you. 
Let's see how much Job knows the word and wants to stand by you. And God put Job to a test. He told the devil, I flee to Job, but do not take his life. Job was afflicted. Job lost everything, but he still stood by God. The Bible speaking says, when Job prayed for his friends, his latter end greatly increased. What are you going through? Where have you got, like, where have you been so tormented in your health, in your job, in your finances, in your marriage? In your life settlement, where have you been so tormented that you look to the right, no friend is there for you. You look to the left, no family is there for you. The trying of our faith, walk at patience. You gotta be patient, people. You don't know what God has in store for you. But I want you to know that no matter how far you go, no matter how you run around, the devil has no free gift for you. Whatever the devil gives you today, the devil will take it from you. Miracle only comes from God. True miracle comes from God. So you got to trust that God that can cause a miracle to happen for you at the last hour. You got to trust that God that can cause a miracle to happen to you, irrespective of the doctor's report. You got to trust that God that can make things to turn around for you, irrespective of man's reports for you. Whatever we see today to be, to, to, be, to be impossible with God, it is very possible. He made the blind to see. He made the deaf to hear. He made the lamb to work. He raised the dead. He turned water into wine. What is it? What is it? All you just got to do is tell God. You know what, God? That's burden. That's burden. That's burden. There's a song in my language that says, Before Lord, do not let me die before you come and revenge for me. Sometimes you just got to tell God that. You don't have to let me die before you revenge for me. I want to stay alive and see you revenge for me. I want to stay alive and see you do that miracle. I don't want to die before you kill my enemies. I don't want to die before you bless my family. No. I just got to be alive and see you do this miracle in my life. I just got to be alive and testify to what you've done. Come on, people of God. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter how they feel. It doesn't matter how you feel. God understands. He made you. He created you. He has a miracle for you. I hear the word strongly. Miracle, miracle, miracle. I was asking God. I need a word. What am I going to say? Even after I have stood up, carried my phone, I did not have a word. I said, what am I going to God, I need something to tell the people. The miracle of Peter impacted his life and that of his friends. And so shall your miracle impact your friend's life, your family's life, your workplace life, your marriage life, your children's life, your relationship life. The miracle that God will bring your way will so impact you that people will begin to ask questions. That people will begin to queue up and tell you, how did you do it? Have you gotten to that stage of your life when something has gone so bad? When something has gone beyond repairs? When something has gone out of hands? When you just feel enough is enough? I'm like that. I'm like that. I have a very strong instinct. I have a very strong instinct. And I don't, I always tell God, I always tell God, you know, there are so many times in your life, you keep on doing something, you keep on doing something. I tell people, it's okay to make mistakes. But if you repeatedly make the mistake that you've been making in your life, you don't know what you want out of your life. The things that were happening in your life 
when you were not a born again Christian. The things that were happening in your life when you were not a believer. The things that were happening in your life when you were not a Christian. If you become a Christian and you're still having broken relationship. If you become a Christian and you are still struggling in your marriage. If you become a Christian and you're still struggling in your job. If you become a Christian and your children are still struggling with the activities, then you have yourself to blame. Begin to pray. Tell the Holy Spirit of God, I want you to tell me fake people. No matter how you pretend to be good, me, <laughs> my spirit is so strong. I will put you down like this, like at the slip of my finger, put you down and move on. Because I have got God. And children of God do not waste their time. If you waste your time, that is your headache. If you waste your time, it is a decision. The Bible speaking says you got to break forth. You got to begin to speak the things you want to see. You got to begin to claim the things you want to see. You got to begin to speak into your life. Positively. Those things you got you want to see, begin to speak them. Begin to speak them. Begin to tell yourself, I am of God. I will make it. I will prosper. Whether the devil likes it or not, the sky is my limit. I shall be the face. I shall be the edge. You begin to proclaim these things. You know something? When God gives you a miracle, it moves you closer to God. Miracle moves us closer to God. You can imagine sitting down here, Megan, Megan, God gave, God gave Megan and the prince a miracle. She was married. And the so-called ex saw nothing good in her. God, God lifted her. From a nobody, from marrying a nobody to marrying a prince. Come on, people. Do you know what a miracle is? You don't get it. A miracle is you not being able to go to school. And God has elevated you. And you are sitting at a managerial position. Giving orders. Somebody who never went to school. It can only be God. Such miracle still happens. You know, you know, you know something. You know, you know something. You know something? I want you to put God to work. Begin to put your God to work. Tell God. You know, I hear people talk about you. I hear people talk about you. I want you to show me who you are, God. I want you, God, to give me a miracle that will move me closer to you. Lord, I want you to give me a miracle that will make me to tell people about you. Lord, I want you to give me a miracle that will make people look at me and say, Truly, this lady was up for something and God stood by her. This guy was up for something and God stood by him. Miracle, miracle. What you do not deserve. What you do not merit. Miracle. I'm going to tell you people a story. When I came to Canada my second year, I was applying for jobs, applying for jobs, applying for jobs. And one day I got, I went for an interview. I submitted my resume. They look at my resume and they said, um, you are overqualified. Said, ah, I'm overqualified. They said, yes, you are overqualified. I said, ah, that's not withstanding. I need the job. It's okay. The Canadians are so, are so full of conscience. They don't want to cheat you. They don't want to cheat you. They don't want to pay you below your salary. They don't want to pay you below your worth. They don't want to pay you below your capability. They don't want to pay you with, below your educational standard. Just, this, is, this is Canadians for you. And I said, I need the job. It doesn't matter. They said, you're overqualified. I said, it's okay. I need the job. 
Oh my goodness. They said no. We can't afford to pay you. They began accounts for me. You worked in Ghana. You worked in Russia. You worked in Nigeria. And now, yeah, we can't pay you. Our company is too small. We just pick people with diploma and one month certificate courses. So we can't hire you. And I came back home and I began to ask myself, I said, what do they mean by I'm overqualified? But I need this job. The next day, I called a guy again. I said, can I come see you in your office? He said, sure. I went to his office. He, and he said, tea or coffee? <laughs> I said, no, 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 I'm fine. And then the Holy Spirit says, why don't you just take something so you can flow? You will be relaxed. And I said, oh, whatever you take is fine by me. And he made coffee. I don't like coffee. Very bitter. I began to drink the coffee with him. I took the coffee. We drank the coffee. We started chatting. And he said, you know something? Anybody will want to hire you. You're so pretty. You're so intelligent. But you know something? Nobody's going to hire you. Unless you go and trim down your resume. Because right now, you are a threat to all of us. You are a threat to all of us. None of us have the degree that you have. None of us have the experiences you have. None of us has been exposed the way you are. All of us in this office has never left Calgary. So you can imagine, if you come in here, after two months, things are going to change. And I said, okay, now I can relate. Now I can relate. And I left and he gave me an advice and he said, you know what? Just work on your resume. Trim it down. Cut off some things. And I came back and I took to his advice. I begin to take some things off my resume. Take something off my resume. Resume is what you guys call CV. And then the next thing, when I took out everything from my resume, they began to tell me, you don't have Canadian experience. And I began to tell them, if you, if you do not hire me, how can I have the Canadian experience? And people begin to say to me, you got to lie. You got to lie. You got to just lie. You got to tell lies. You got to say you worked in Canada, in Edmonton, in, in, in Toronto, in Ottawa, in, in, in Lethbridge, in Basic. Like you can use any way and lie. And I said, really? I'm not going to tell lie because I need a job. Whatever God cannot give me, I do not need it. I go back to my house and I began to pray. I told my pastor, I need a job. I need a job. I don't, I don't really care. Like, I just need a job. Miraculously. Miraculously. After three months, God changed my name. After three months, God changed my resume. I went back to that place. When I went there, the manager that was hiring wasn't the person on seat. And the new person just saw me and fell in love with me. He wasn't even asking questions. We just sat down talking about the weather. How is the weather today? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. You know, when I was driving here, like people are so... We just chatted at the end of the day. When can you start? <laughs> When can you start? And that was it. So people of God, it doesn't matter where you have gone. It doesn't matter where you have been rejected. It doesn't matter where you were said no to. It doesn't matter where you have, or where door had closed on you. Begin to pray. Begin to believe. Miracles still happens. Tell God what you want. And go back to the same place that you were rejected. You will be accepted. The way that God, the way that the miracle that God did for Peter affected his life and that of his friends. Your miracle will affect your life and that of your friend. Your miracle will affect your life and that of your family. Your miracle will affect your life and that of your, 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 your marriage, your relationship, your children.
Cause miracle in your life will affect everything in you. Somebody begin to say the word miracle, miracle, miracle. You serve a miraculous God. Don't be timid. Don't be timid. Begin to stand boldly for God. Begin to, begin to carry your shoulder high. Begin to put your head up and walk proudly as a child of God. He said that he will give the head to you as your possession. To have and a fullness of it thereof belongs to God. So when you are a child of God, you begin to claim those things which God has made sufficient for you. Ye are small gods. Hey. I wish you could read your Bible. I wish you could know the word of God and begin to owe God by his word and say, come on God. <laughs> oh goodness. You gotta see me pray and begin to talk to God as if he's my boyfriend. I tell him, come on God. I don't know when you started lying. I don't know when you started to not keep to promises. I don't know when you started saying a thing and it doesn't come up as. I so much believe you. I so much trust you. And I know you cannot do this to me right now. You know how much I need this thing. You gotta make it happen. I don't care how you do it. But I know that you're gonna do it. You're gonna make it happen. I'm going to bed to sleep. And by the time I wake up tomorrow, I don't know how you're gonna do it. But I know that you're gonna do it. The songwriter says, I don't know how you did it, but you made a way. I don't care how you would do it, but I know that you will make a way. God loves it when you have solemnly put your trust in him. God loves it when you do not have an option. Begin to tell God, I do not have a plan B. You are my whole in all. You are my egg in one basket. I do not have an option. I do not have a plan B. It is either you do it or I'm laughed at. It is either you do it or I am disgraced. <laughs> Jacob held the angel in the early morning of that dawn, And he says, you must bless me. Until you bless me, I will not let go of you. So if you cannot claim your blessings from God, who else is going to bless you? Who else? Nobody. The only one that has the key to a miracle is God. We are talking of a miraculous God. The one that turned water into wine. The one that caused the blind to see. The one that caused the lame to wake. The one that raised Lazarus from the dead. That is the miraculous God that we're talking about. The one that, the, the, the one that, the one that, the one that they took the prostitute to. And said, Master, she has slept with so many men. And you have said that any woman that sleeps with more than a man should be stoned to death. And he laughed and he looked at them and he said, If ye are without a sin, cast your stone. They began to drop their stone. They began to drop their stone because nobody found himself perfect. I don't care where you have been condemned, I don't care where you have been neglected, I don't care when you where you have been brought to zero, I don't care where you were taken for granted. I don't care how many times you've been jolted. I don't care how many times you've been divorced. I am talking of a miraculous God that can change your name from a nobody to somebody. I'm talking of a miraculous God that can rewrite your name. I'm talking of a miraculous God that can showcase you. I'm talking of a miraculous God that can go into that office and begin to rewrite your name. Come on, people of God. You did not hear me. Do you know that? Do you know that? People so wanted to remove me from my job. Because I pray. 
When I go to work, I am a, I am an arbitral late comer. Arbitral late comer. Arbitral late comer. That is who I am. So you will get me five minutes to ten minutes to, and, and I'm just rushing, packing, pack, 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 rushing into my work, and then they expect me to just sit down in the morning meeting without before I do anything. They just want me to sit down. I go into the toilet and I begin to pray. When I finish praying, before I come out and I join, the people began to gossip me. They said, "Oh, she's showing off." She, she brought juju from Africa. So she needs to go into the toilet to spray the juju before she can come. Oh, prophetic queen, God bless you. I just feel like bringing you on camera. People began to say she brought juju. She brought juju from, the, from Africa. She wants to share her juju before she comes out. I did not care. I began to do that. I began to do that. And one day, I went to take my coffee. And when I went to take my coffee, they said to me, you know what? They did not even tell me. I saw the list. I saw the list. Probation. You know what probation is? Three months probation. Three months probation. I saw my name that I was going to leave that job. I came up. You know what? I, 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 I was not bothered. I gave my best that day. I gave my best that day. Usually, I do not do cleaning at my job. When I am done, I just walk out and I go. I don't like doing eye service. Like, I am who I am. But I gave my best that day. I stayed and I cleaned with them. When I was done cleaning, I came back home. And I took the list that they have written. I took the list, came back to my house. I kept the list all night. I began to play music. I was dancing around the list, dancing around the list, dancing around the list, praising God. I said, Paul and Silas, praise God. And something happened. Daniel, Daniel, even while thrown in the lion's den, was still praising God. Now, I'm about to leave my job. God, I got nobody to help my parents. I got nobody to assist my family. I am the breadwinner of my family. You got to give me my daily bread. I don't care how you do it, but you must do it, God. I began to pray. The next morning, I went to work so early. I got in and I started smiling, greeting everybody. And then they sat down. They began to find the list. They began to find the list. They began to find the list. And I told my boss, what are you looking for? He said, eh, 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 eh. no, 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 don't worry. I said, no, what are you looking for? I could give you. Maybe I know what you're looking for. I could give you. She began to look at me. She did not know what she should do. And I went into the place and I brought a list for her. She began to go through the list. And she skipped my name. People left the job. I was still there. And by the grace of God, have been working in this job like a queen. I just called them today and told them, you know what? I'm going to Africa and I'll be gone for three months. And when I come back, I still go to my work. Somebody said, miraculous God. You said the miraculous God that can cause things to happen. It doesn't matter whether you are 40. It doesn't matter if you're 50. God can still settle you. It doesn't matter if you did not go to school. God can still give you a job. It doesn't matter if your, your womb has been removed. God can still make you to conceive. Begin to say miraculous God. Begin to claim your miracle. Begin to speak into your life. Who is a doctor? By the grace of God, I have been there. We treat God heals. A lady had HIV. A lady had HIV. She was getting married. She came to me and she said, please, can you write me a test and say negative on my HIV test? And I said, why? 
She said because she is positive. She is reactive. So she just wants a, a result to, to lie to the guy so that the marriage will continue. And I said, you know something? Whoever loves you will not look at who, who you are, what you have, where you from. Love is unconditional. If he loves you, he will go ahead with the marriage. Tell him the truth. My friend went round and round and round and round and round and refused to tell the guy that she was reactive. And one day, I was sitting down at the, at the internal medicine in University of Calabar Teaching Hospital. And the guy walked in. And I was sitting there, and I was trying to, I was consulting for children. And then, I, I, I think, I had land compass for immunization. And then he came in, and my boss was telling me what to do. How many files I'm going to, I'm going to consult for the day before I leave. And the guy came in. People of God, the same problem that the girl has is the same problem that the guy has. <laughs> I began to laugh. And I said, you know what? You guys are just meant to be. Because you are not going to condemn her. She is not going to condemn you. Miraculous God. Today, the people I'm telling you about are about non-reactive i don't know what they did i don't know how they did it i don't know where they went it is none of my business but so long as i know that god does miracle i'm sure that the miraculous god did it for them why are you worried why are you worried instead of believing in god why are you worried I got into the hospital. They said, Katie, Katie, your calciums are not working. Your hemoglobin is not working. Your parents are not working. Everything in you is dead. <laughs> and I looked at my specialist and I said, Doctor, you know that as you're holding me, it is two people's hand. Maybe it is you. Maybe it's your blood that is reacting because I do not have a problem. I tested myself from Africa before I came here. I dated a Russian medical doctor who runs my test monthly. And now you're telling me that everything in me is dead. That devil is a bastard. That devil is a liar. I refuse. I reject. I begin to cancel, I begin to cancel, I begin to reject. The same me is whom I am still here. They said you cannot move a vehicle. You cannot drive. You have to park your car. I said, says who? I will only, be re I will only believe the report of the Lord. Come on, people. Come on, people. I made a video on mad faith. Begin to have your mad faith. Begin to believe that God still does miracle. Begin to call miraculous God, miraculous God, miraculous God. God of miracle. God of a last chance. God of a second chance. I don't care where you've gone astray. I don't care where you went wrong. I don't care where you went astray. But God that restored Peter can restore you. That God that restored me can restore you. That God that changed somebody's HIV status can change yours. That God that restored blood to people who were, who, who were anemic can restore yours. That God that gave child to the woman of hundreds can do yours for you. You see these things on the internet, you think it's a, it's, it's a joke. You, see, you think it's, it's drama. No. If you fake the Jesus thing, I do not fake it. It is real. I'm telling you real things. Real things. If God did not do it, I will not tell you. If you want. If you want, I will show you. I will show you proof. I will show you proof. Hold on. You guys don't 
don't get it. You you guys don't understand. You think when people come on, when people come on and begin to say things that people are joking, people ain't joking. Look at this and go and read it. Go and show it to your doctor to tell you what it treats. Go show it to people. Let them tell you. I ain't joking here. The God that restored me can rescue you. What are we talking about? Do you know what it means for you to have phlebotomies? Phlebotomies. Weekly phlebotomies of 500 cc. 500 cc in a strange land. You go to work. You drive. You cook. You do everything. Do you know what a phlebotomy is? Blood insects from your body. 500 cc. Every week. You begin to get dizzy. You begin to stagger. You got no strength. You got no energy. And you got to buy this medication. Those of you who knows how a dollar goes for. Those of you who knows how much dollar is being changed to. You see that? Did you see the figure? Did you see the figure? What somebody has to buy medication for in a, in a week. Did you see that? Did you see that? So come on, people of God. Begin to trust God. Begin to grow your faith. Begin to call a miraculous God who can cause things to happen. And when you walk into the when you walk into the doctor's room, they begin to look you. They begin to look at you and they're like, come on, lady. Where, where, who, where, where are you from? How do you do these things? And I just keep thinking, hey, 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 hallelujah. I serve a very big God. Oh. Hey, hey, hallelujah. I serve a very big God. Oh. There is nothing. There is nothing. Don't be moved by don't be moved by devils. Don't be moved by people who do not still know that God exists. Focus and things will happen for you. The way you want it to happen for you, that is the way to happen for you. Do not be do not care. Do not be bothered. Do not be moved. Do not be intimidated by people. Focus on God. That God that still does miracle, He can still do miracle for you. That's for sure. Nothing can take it away. When you say miracle, it happens just the way it is. So today, I said I was not going to take much of your time. Miracle moves us closer to God. And I am praying that God will give you a miracle that will move you closer and closer and closer and closer to God. So that you will got to know him. You will got to save him. You will got to go all the way for him. That is all that you need. The miracle that when God gives you, it will begin to cover up everything in your life. That is the miracle that you need. You, don't, you need not to be intimidated. You need not to be bothered. You need not to be moved. Don't be distracted when you are on a journey to face God. Be focused. And that is how God will bless you. If you're focused, God will bless you. If you're distracted, the devil will take over. So, we're going to pray that God will bring miracle our way. So that no matter where we are, no matter what happens, the God of miracle will bless us in out, in in. Day in, day out. The God of miracle will bless us. So, we are going to close this section. Like I said, I'm not going to take people's time today. I'm not going to take people's time today. By the grace of God, I will see you again tomorrow. And I'll be bringing something special again your way. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I cover your bed with the blood of Jesus. I cover your water with the blood of Jesus. I cover your endeavors with the blood of Jesus. I cover your going out with the blood of Jesus. I cover whatever you do with the blood of Jesus. No weapon fashioned against you will prosper. And every evil tongue, every evil spirit, every evil human being, every spite that comes to you in rising will die a thousand times in Jesus' name. Whoever is not of God will not see the morning dawn of tomorrow. If you feel that you hate God and you hate his word, you shall not see the next day. I cast you in the name of God the Father. I cast you in the name of God the Son. Until you begin to believe in God and trust in God, nothing shall work in your life. Because you do not believe and you do not know that God exists. Until you show forth and surrender to God, nothing shall be moved. I cover you, I bless 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 you. 
morning tomorrow and have a very blessed night father we thank you we adore you we worship you we magnify your name because you god father we bless you for this section because there is none like you in as much as we have heard the word lord and we have believed that you are a miraculous god that you are that god that can turn our situations into miracle father i bless your name because i know that the miracle that you are about to give us is beyond human understanding father we seal our miracle with the blood of jesus that the miracle that you will give to us lord that nothing shall by any means take it away from us in jesus name amen let's share the grace of fellowship May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit raise and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord, celebrating forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, sweethearts, I love you guys so much, you know it. You know that I love you guys so much. Have a good one. Have a good night. God bless you. Remember to pray. Trust in God. Put your belief in God. He will never fail you. Your miracle is on the way. You are next in line for a testimony. God bless you. Bye.